Hi, everybody. It's me. Been a long time, hasn't it? Well, I'm sorry for my absence, but I have been pretty busy lately. But I've decided that I need to just get to posting videos because if I wait until the time is right or everything is perfect, then it's just never going to get done. And my videos might be a little shorter than usual. I know they were already pretty short, but they're going to be even shorter and less polished. But that's the way the internet works. You got to get the content out there. Today, I want to talk to you about making amends and asking people for forgiveness uh, for the harm that you've caused them. Matthew five twenty three and 24 say, If you are offering your gift at the altar and there you remember that somebody has something against you, leave your gift there at the altar, first go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Well, why does God say that? Well, first, it's to stress the importance of reconciliation. Remember, the final prayer that Jesus uttered when he was on earth was a prayer for unity for the church. And so it is vitally important that his church is unified, and that means clearing the air, reconciling, working through our differences. The second is, your gift will not be accepted if there is still enmity between you and your brother or your sister in Christ. I don't know about you, but it is very difficult for me to give sometimes. I never really liked it very much. But you know what I really hate? Giving for nothing. I want God to bless my gift. I want God to receive my gift and, and to bless it. And God won't do that if I offer my gift while there is still enmity, while there is still hatred in my heart towards my brother or sister in Christ. So make sure that your gift is accepted and work through those differences. Even if the other person refuses to reconcile, if they refuse to forgive you, at least you made the effort. Remember, the Bible says, in as much as it depends on you, live in peace with everybody. You can't make people forgive you. You can't make people come around, but you can do your part. You can do the work that you need to do. You can clean up your side of the street. You can take ownership. You can take responsibility for your part in the disagreement or the feud or the quarrel. Now, some of you might think, well, you know, if I go now, it's been so long, and it's just going to open up a whole can of worms. It's just going to make them angry all over again, and they're going to be screaming at me and, and cursing me and, and throwing things at me. Who knows? Well, that may happen. I can't guarantee that it won't. But in my experience, it has not gone that way. In fact, the other person is usually very receptive. And I think it will turn out that way for you if you prayerfully offer your amends, ask for their forgiveness, take responsibility, admit your fault in the matter. And let me tell you why, and I hate to say this, but I think it's true. The reason why I think people will be gracious toward your amends is that yours just might be the only real, sincere apology that they get in their entire life. Think about it. Nobody apologizes for anything anymore. Nobody admits fault for anything anymore. They blame somebody else. Or they'll offer a cryptic explanation like mistakes were made. But when you own what you've done, what you said, and you're real about it, and you're sincere, and you're honest, that's, that's real authenticity, which is very rare today. And I think people will appreciate that because they rarely, if ever, get it from anyone anywhere else at any time. And that's why I think when you make your amends, 
it will go over better than you expected. Well, again, sorry for taking so long to post. I promise, nah, I'm not going to promise. My goal is to post more frequently. Uh, hopefully you get something out of these videos. Uh, if you do, like and subscribe. And encourage your friends to like and subscribe. And with that, I will bid you farewell. God bless you.